Thank you, Mike. My presentation is just a small piece of the uh, a large project that we have done at two horse facilities. These two pilot farms, uh, one of them is the University of Massachusetts horse farm, and the other one is um, what we call it Blue Star Farm, which is a sanctuary for uh, draft horses. And uh, the, the, the presentation, we, we have done a lot of things in those two pilot farms, uh, the pasture management, the manure management, fencing out wetlands, um, the sacrifice areas, all of those things. And my presentation is just uh, targeting, um, uh, uh, targeting the, the uh, composting horses, uh, horse manure, uh, basically for small facilities, uh, those people who have only one or two or maybe three horses. Because uh, as I will uh, explain a little bit more, uh, about 70% of the horse owners in Massachusetts have, uh, in average, they have two horses. So those are actually the, the most pollutant facilities because uh, they don't know what to do with the manure. You know, it's not large enough to do uh, commercial composting. It's not large enough to uh, haul it away to, uh, to commercial um, composting facilities. So they just, just put it in the backyard, pile it up for so many years. So, uh, so my presentation is about those small um, operation and as Mike said, uh, the, any suggestions, any recommendations should be low cost. Otherwise, they're not going to take your advice. So, with that, um, uh, I, I also need to say that the, the funding for the whole project, not just this one, the whole project uh, comes from um, Mass DEP um, and the partially and partially from. Uh, University of Massachusetts Experiment Station. And also this project, the whole project, again, not this one, um, is uh, related to a multi-state um, um, hatch project that we have uh, with other states. And I really thank, uh, thank um, the group members for their advice, for their feedbacks and recommendations. Um, So, a little background about horse situation in Massachusetts is, uh, the, you know, just by listening to uh, other presenters, especially those in, in the morning, uh, I think I'm coming from a uh, different planet because it's a, things in Massachusetts is totally different than many other states. Um, we have, uh, oh, <clears throat> it's just an estimate, we really don't know exactly how many, but it's just an estimate that we have about 50,000 horses. But what we do know that we have more horses than cows in Massachusetts. And um, uh, <clears throat> those, um, um, I did a very preliminary survey back in 2007. Uh, the goal of that survey was to find out exactly what kind of educational um, program we should uh, we should have for horse owners, and uh, one of the outcomes of that survey was 70% um, of those uh, horse owners had, in average, had only two horses, and uh, uh, and as you may guess, the manure was the the biggest issue at the top of the list of priorities of this, and they didn't know what to do with the manure. And this man manure issue is uh, partly because they had a very small acreage, so they, did, they didn't have enough land for land application. That's part of that. And uh, the other one is, as you may know, uh, it's uh, the horse manure, or I should call it the stall waste, has a, is very rich in carbon. Um, again, in Massachusetts, I don't know why they just uh, frequently removing uh, the beddings and they sometimes they just replacing the bedding every week. So what they have is about 70, 80 percent uh, of the uh, of the stall waste is just a wood shaving, and uh, it's it's uh, so it's different than other states, I guess. Um, so um, I, I just give you one example. Um, this is a this is a story about 
uh, uh, one of those facilities. Uh, this, this land is about 10 acres and uh, it used to be rented to a livestock producers for so many years. And then the, the owner, which is, just happened to be a horse owner and was living about 10 miles away, asked the, the renters to take the, the waste and spread it on the land and he refused to do that and he knew why. Um, so he, he canceled the, the guy, uh, the horse owner canceled the contract and he did it himself. And uh, you can see that it actually basically killed the grasses um, because not only he spread that and it's all wood shaving. It's, I mean you hardly can find any raw manure in it. Um, so he killed and then he called me and said, what am I supposed to do? I said, well, one thing you should do, don't till it. Because if you till it, then it would be, um, you know, you, you're actually making the situation even harder. So, but if you go to many horse farms in Massachusetts, you see a, 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 something like this. You know, they have one or two piles of manure set there for so many years. And um, so um, they really, uh, polluting the environment. So, uh, for, s for so many years, as you know, the we, uh, we suggesting three bin system. Um, actually, this is a demonstration for small horse farms. Uh, we made it several years ago at um, the university horse farms. Uh, it's just that, you know, just to show the basics and the knowledge behind the composting and uh, we we also demonstrated that it has to be uh, covered and that sort of things. Um, the result was okay because, um, you know, we had the, the, those uh, equine management students to, you know, to take care of it, and to, to, air, to turn it uh, or to, um, to monitor the moisture and that sort of things. But, um, you know, the people started to use it and uh, there are some, you know, this, this person, you know, had the idea of three bins and just uh, the, just did it that way, and uh, or this one. So they called me and said, "Hey, we're using those long stem thermometer, and the temperature is just doesn't change." Well, then I am asking, uh, "Did you turn it? No. Did you add any nitrogen to it? No. Did you monitor the moisture? No." And so. Um, so they, they, they were frustrated and they just abandoned whatever they started to. Uh, for, <clears throat> so yeah, so it didn't really work out, the three bins. It worked for very few, I know that, but uh, basically it didn't work out. Um, so because of that, we decided to use this um, aerator system. Um, this is Blue Star Farm and we came up with those two uh, wooden beans, um, different shapes and different size, and we connected uh, to a pump. This was just for demonstration again. It wouldn't solve the problem at the Blue Star because they have four huge horses. They have, uh, you know, the, the, those are draft horses and they produce uh, a lot of manure, but, which this one cannot solve the problem. But this was just educational thing. And uh, so, um, yeah, so we use those PVC pipes, and um, it worked fine. At, um, it, it took about, um, about uh, I should say, um, two and a half months to three months uh, to have a, a good finished compost. You know, that we, that we measured this carbon to nitrogen ratio, it was 29, which is, was good. And uh, the pump works only one minute. Uh, every hour or so, and we had the luxury of electricity in that uh, nearby, so we used the electricity, but it could be solar, so it could be, if it's in the middle of the um, farm, um, still we can, we can use, because it doesn't really consume so much energy. So after that, we decided to make it a little bit better. So this time, uh, oh, I, I, I should say that uh, the horse farm, uh, um, has a greenhouse and um, they, they, they produce vegetables also for, um, for income to run the, the facility. 
So they took that and they used it and it worked just fine. So we encouraged and so we went to a, well, a little bit more fancier woods and this time um, we used, uh, you know, we, we bought some boards and um, so you, those are removable and uh, so, yeah, so those are removable, you can take it out and put it back and also it has this wire so we could put a tarp on top uh, which minimizes the odor and also it actually protects us from rainfall. Um, one thing we did this time was we actually we added about one or two inches of finished compost on top that really helped and uh, speed up the process. This time we had only eight weeks um, required for finishing compost and uh, the, we measured the, the carbon and nitrogen ratio and it was about 25. So that worked fine. So next time we said, okay, um, that might not be very uh, applicable to some horse owners. So we used a sim. So this is, this is just to show that the heat actually went up to 160 and it worked fine. So this time we said, okay, let's, let's work with the trash bins. And um, there are a lot of benefits of using the, the trash bins. Uh, you know, it's, they have wheels, so you, do, you can carry them um, from barn to wherever the composting area is or vice versa. Uh, it has a lid, so you can put it, uh, protect it from rainfall, an odor problem um, or fly problem. So those those things that uh, we said, let's do it. Remember that we are targeting only uh, the horse owners having only one or two horses. So they, they, they generate just a little bit manure. So what we did actually at the, at the, the, the bottom of the uh, trash bins, we uh, made a hole and we uh, installed an air nozzle in there. And uh, we put this uh, wooden, perforated wooden uh, bottom on top so to make sure that the air is flowing and at the bottom of the wood we just put those PVC pipes to make sure that it is, it is stable and it's not going to move and uh, then we connected the, 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 the nozzle to a, uh, with this um, hose, rubber hose to, uh, to this compressor and uh, we started with those three beans. The first bean I consider it as, uh, you know, the, the fresh material goes in there, but the other two, which are at different stages of composting, are connected to one, uh, oops, to, to one, com com one compressor. Again, it worked fine. Um, the carbon ni nitrogen ratio was again about 25, 26. And uh, so we had one problem, which I will explain it a little bit, uh, a little bit more. So the problem with the, this system was that these two, even though these two, oh, sorry, these two bins uh, are at different stages of composting, but they are connected to compressor and therefore they receive the, uh, the same amount of air, the same period, and so we thought maybe we should change that as well. So this time, again, we started with those three beans. Um, those trash beans uh, roughly is about 90 uh, gallons and <coughs> holds roughly about 750 pounds of waste. Um, so we use this, uh, what we call it raspberry PI, um, of course, this is not really the real size. This is, uh, uh, this is very enlarged. They are small chips, and uh, they cost about anywhere between $15 to $30. Um, we bought it online. Um, the one that we used was $30, but you can, you can buy cheaper than that. And uh, what it does, the, P, uh, the Raspberry Pi measures the ambient uh, temperatures, but also it measures the uh, the temperature in the beans, and it adjusts the airflow. 
and it adjusted how long and how much the compressor or blower should work. So this is what we did. And each bin has its own uh, shop blower. Um, the shop blower is about $70, $75, something like that. Um, the fancy ones could be more than 100, but those are just fine, and they work in just fine. And so those Raspberry um, PIs uh, controls the blower for how long it can work. And uh, so this um, cycling uh, really worked fine. And um, so that was for um, one or two horses, and some, some horse, horse owners have, may have four or five. Oh, one, one more thing. Uh, this could be four, five, six, more than three. It doesn't have to be three. And, uh, and, the, um, and the, the, the point is that th this is basically one-time investment. So whatever it is, so each bin cost us about $180, uh, could be a little bit less, but th that is just one-time investment and you can use it several times. And the only thing that may, may need to, to be replaced is the blower, uh, which sometimes in, you, know, you have to, it burns out and you have to change it. Um, for larger facilities, when they have like four or five horses, uh, we thought maybe we can, um, we can use another system. So, this time, um, like Jean said, it's just a windrow, and the, what we did, we put a, a perforated PVC pipe uh, underneath, and then we just put um, waste on top. Uh, what we used was like about three feet tall and about four feet wide, and it worked fine. And um, remember that we, that composting area was surrounded by uh, a grass filter. So this is the, this is the, the almost at the end, uh, we put a, this geofabric um, on top and for protecting from, for, from rainfall. And uh, there is a blower that we just put that uh, plastic cover on top, and uh, the, the blower is connected to the um, perforated pipe uh, with the elbow. And then this is the, this is the blower that we used, and uh, finally we, we use ropes and hooks and to make it uh, protected from rainfall. And uh, Within about, again, about eight to nine weeks, we had a finished compost with the carbon to nitrogen ratio around 25, 26. Um, so the, the finished, the finished product, product was very good, and this lady is smelling, and, uh, and the, the same lady used it uh, in the rose garden, and uh, he was, she was very happy about how many worms uh, started to, uh, to active to be active in there. Okay, well, thank you.